All right, so as you guys know, I've been kind of working on this little side project, SaaS business. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to do with my code, start adding some tests, right? We actually have real users who sometimes use this to generate icons. Um, I don't know if they're real users or just my subscribers who want to just play around with my stuff. But regardless, when you have real users touching your app, and as your application grows in complexity, it's really beneficial to start adding some form of testing. There is a debate about like what testing is actually useful, what testing is not useful. In my personal opinion, I think testing as much as you can, whether that be in unit testing, in integration testing, or end-to-end -end testing, all of it's useful. Um, make sure you do it. And if you have real paying users that are using your application, you don't want to ship a bug to them and potentially break their user experience, especially if you're working on a higher stakes application. For example, let's say you're building like the healthcare.gov site and there's a bunch of users who need this to be able to get their healthcare. You want to make sure that your stuff is fully tested so that you don't push changes and potentially break production and people can no longer sign up for healthcare, right? Versus like if you're building a little side project and it doesn't matter if your stuff breaks because no one's using it, then fine. You don't need to really test. But it all kind of boils down to like how much risk are you willing to put onto a deployment and potentially breaking your user's uh, experience. So I decided to go to my code and I started working with the React testing library and seeing if I could use React testing library to verify some validation. So the one thing in this application that I think is important is that when you don't select anything, you get some validation errors that pop up. You get this alert that says, hey, please enter a prompt. You must select a style, a color, a shape. In fact, if I don't enter this one in, it also says, please enter an amount. So I wanted to actually write a test that verifies that if you don't select anything and you clear out this input and click generate icons, all of the expected error visual cues pop up for the user, right? You get this alert, it has five things in it. And then around every single form group, there is some type of border that's red so that the user can visually understand that, hey, there's an error on the page. So that is the test that I um, started to write. So I have a test folder. And inside of this test folder, I have a generate test um, TSX. If I do an MPX Jess and do the file name, you can see that it ran one test in 313 milliseconds and it passed. So let me kind of walk you through again, like the emphasis of why you want to test this stuff. As you're making code changes and you're like refactoring stuff around, it's very easy to accidentally delete something or leave something off. Like let's say I, you know, I didn't do a border 400 and I did 40. It's a, it's, you know, it's a, it's a mistake you can do. And there's no type safety around this. You can accidentally mess up your styles. You can mess up this Boolean logic. You could accidentally move code around and just like delete this line at some point. Or you could have some, some logical errors. Like for example, up here where I do all the form validation inside of this use generate form. This is where I do all my form validation. And I check that, make sure that things are defined. I could have an error in any of this code, right? And when I do have an error, I want to know when I broke my code. So just by going into the class and deleting that border, I want to show you that my test will now fail because the tests are expecting that there's some type of visual indicator saying that, hey, there's an error on this page. Now, this is a little bit brittle, I will admit, to test that there is a border around um, a border of 400 around a form group. Not the best. I mean, we could do some regex and like just verify that there is some type of border red. Um, or we could do some other approaches, but at the very least, this is a step in the in a right direction where we know when we broke the UI. Because now if I were to go back and click generate, all right, so I have the app running locally now. I'm going to go ahead and just submit. Oh, I have to sign in to start. Hold on, let me sign in. Everything's good. I'll go ahead and click submit. And now notice that there's no error around color. Which is, which is bad, right? We want users to know that there's an error here. Otherwise, they'll be confused that like, hey, I don't have anything selected. And also there should have been something that says, please select the color up here. So we completely broke the validation and the tests actually fail in a certain way to kind of show that. So I wanted to walk you through the code base of like, how did I write this test? And again, I'm still trying to learn React testing library. I don't really use this on my, my, my job. We do a different approach for testing where we just kind of like, test the underlying logic of our views and not actually the views themselves. But I do start to see the importance of testing um, from an accessibility standpoint 
because from our work project, we have a bunch of tests that just test the controller logic and all this. And we're using a certain framework for basically handling all of our logic. But now all of our tests are highly coupled to that framework. And it's very hard to refactor off that framework now because we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tests that all depend on this framework living there. We're using something called Cerebral JS. This is what we use in our application. It's a little bit old. I wouldn't recommend using this anymore because I don't think it's really maintained. But all of our tests use a bunch of this cerebral stuff to basically test the logic that's behind all of our views. And it's just a lot of coupling going on. So I think React testing library is actually onto something where just test the, the, the ARIA roles or whatever on your DOM elements on your React components. And it makes your tests very decoupled from the underlying implementation details. And it also makes it less brittle because now I can just refactor my code however I want. And I don't have to worry about my tests depending on some internal hook logic or you know knowing about some React form hooks or whatever. So this is how the test basically works. Um, don't worry about the setup server stuff. That's just something else to play with. So we have a, an init statement here that says, should show validation errors on an empty form submit uh, when, when the user is also logged in, let me just change this. This wording was bad. So what I basically do here is first of all, every page in my next app depends on TRPC, which means I have to mock out or kind of set up a react query provider. And I have to set up the TRPC provider. Um, and then I also have to set up the use session provider. So there's a lot of boilerplate that I have to do just to like, uh, get the get the component ready for testing because it depends on all these different providers i'm not a fan of all this but it's kind of like a necessary evil um because again this is like implementation detail and like i have to set all this stuff up to be able to test this page but anyway that's kind of what i had to do i had to like mock this stuff up i also had to mock out my window.scroll too because i do have some scroll logic when the validation errors show but once i've kind of mocked everything up i have um a component that I'm trying to test is right here. This is the generate component that resembles that generate page that I just showed you, uh, which is here. So I basically set up the generate page. I give it all the providers it needs to be able to successfully spin up. And then I start kind of doing things in the UI, right? So I first find a button that has a text. How many images do you want? This is how you can do it with react testing library. You basically grab the screen and you say, give me an element by role of spin button. Um, this is called a spin button because it has like the up arrows and down arrows for numbers, but it basically finds the button that has a corresponding role with a name of how many images do you want? And it's going to delete. So it deletes this just so I can verify that that form input also validates correctly. And then I find the button by role, or I find the element by role of button that has a name of generate icons. That's going to come down here and it's going to find this button. And then I click it right here. I basically say click. Now the way you can click with react testing library is you bring in something called a user event. Uh, let me clean up this code. I have so much like yellow stuff everywhere. Yeah, so I bring in this user event library that I think you have to npm install separately. Maybe I could be wrong about that. I think you just import it maybe. Um, Right. And then I use it to just click on the submit button. And then I basically check that we have an alert that displays on the page, right? The alert is a red DOM element that has a type of role under the hood. If I look at this thing, it has a role of alert, which I kind of manually added to this div. Um, and once you have that, I just, you know, verify that it shows up. That's good. But I also want to take it a step further. I want to verify that the content of this thing has the correct number of LIs in it. So every LI has a role of list item. And I basically say, give me all the list items that are on the page. And I want to verify that one exists for prompt, color, style, shape, and amount. <laughs> okay. And then for every, every single one, I basically just loop over and find to make sure those all exist. So that's how I'm verifying that the alert pops up and the user actually gets the correct feedback when there's errors. But then I also go and I inspect every single, um, form group basically where I'll find a text box that says describe your icon using a noun and an adjective 
and then I go up a level to find like the parent wrapper. You see here, I have to say find the closest form controller in a form control and verify that it has a class of border red. I kind of just do this for all of these. Like I do it for the radio buttons. I do it for the uh, the style radio buttons. I do it for the uh, the shape radio buttons. And then I also do it for that number spin button at the bottom. So that's the approach that I have been taking for um, getting some tests started on this application. Again, this right now is like a, a mixture of like an integration test because it's integrating a bunch of my different React functions and uh, components together and verifying them with tests. Now I do plan to make more tests to basically hit the API endpoint and verify that I get back errors if something wrong happened and verify that like images display on the page if everything worked fine. Those were the next steps. So I was trying to like bring in a server. Um, I think there's something called mock service worker, MSW that a lot of people use. So I was trying to set up the server so I can start mocking out Git requests and post requests. But again, we are using TRPC. So I have to kind of like figure out how do I get this set up with TRPC because it hits like one endpoint. Um, it does like a single Git request or post request to an endpoint to do its mutations and queries. And I have to figure out a way to like make sure that's properly mocked out. But I haven't spent any time doing that yet. So that's kind of on my radar of the next things I need to do. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you all to kind of, you know, refresh your memory about why you want to test. I know some people on social media are kind of against testing. They think testing's bad, but for any, anyone I talk to who works at like a large project that cares about quality, they usually have tests and they usually have a lot of tests. So I just want to kind of emphasize that point. And then I want to give you a walkthrough of like how I did it in this project with a single test with the React testing library uh, framework. Anyway, if you enjoyed watching, uh, be sure to thumbs up, subscribe, comment, press the bell icon. I do have a Discord that you're welcome to join if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to hang out with some other devs. And I also have a newsletter. I do plan to work on a course where I show you how to build a, a trimmed down version of this SaaS product where we're going to connect to Stripe. We're going to connect to S3. We're going to get it deployed. We're going to build this all out with Next.js with the T3 stack. So if you're interested in buying the course in the future, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter and I will send out that link to the course when it is ready. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.